okay if I come back in like five, ten minutes? Yeah, of course. Well, I have to take them out of the pan, but they have to nope. cool a little bit first. We're just going to be having a conversation. <laughs> with cheese. With All right, if you're walking on conversation. With cheese and the tugboat. Anything more than that, then it could be unsettling. It's not a discussion. It's just it's conversation. It's conversation. I pressed record, like... Yeah, no, I got that. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't see the discrete move, but then I saw these uh, voice modulation things uh, on your phone here. I, I should have better like, hidden uh, what was going on. We could have just kept going with our informal banter. Yeah, there's just conversations with Cheese and Tugboat. And two glasses of wine. <laughs> I hope that I hope up. that picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> It's off in the distance. I gotta From a one. distance. <laughs> Without question in my mind, I'm going to find that section and amplify it. I can do that. Whatever. Ain't no thing. But a chicken wing. So today, new topic. Big topic. Big topic. Could be a two-liner. Two-liner. Well, as long as we're honest about it. I think, uh, you know what, let's scrap the topic we're going to do and just focus on honesty and more specifically truth. Whatever we were going to do, we'll just now do truth. So what, what is truth? <laughs> the truth of the matter is, is that uh, Tugboat here just uh, sounded the horn. <laughs> that, that wasn't me. You'll know when it was me. Was that was... was no, that was, came from back there. That's two glass of wine country back there. Jeez. <laughs> Not accusing. I guess it has a little bit of fiber in it. <sighs> Girls don't do that. Just so you know. So we're being honest. Well, I know. Truth's the truth. It's undeniable. <laughs> it's undeniable. But what is truth? What is truth, Tugboat? Well, I don't know. I... Mostly uh, would relate truth to fact or reality or some kind of fidelity to an original idea or concept, I guess. Well, just off the top of your head? Yeah. You don't think in kind of dictionary style facts? <laughs> Pretty sure if it was a dictionary term, you would throw it off with a, a colloquial term. <laughs> Uh, regarding to, definition. Uh, regarding to fact or reality or fidelity to an original I idea, um, but that's just that's just me just spouting off the top. Yeah, well, that's the truth. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Um, and who often defines these truths? So, like science, you, scientists, scientists, uh, law makers, Lady Justice with her blindness. Standing there, she holding an apple and a like an abacus. No, it's a scale. Uh, it's a scale. scales of truth. It's a scale. Yeah. No, it's the scales of truth. It's not just a scale. Yeah. There's probably only a limited number made worldwide. Now, if Prestige you were worldwide. if you were just to speculate, if you just go out, like speculate, like would you believe science over law? Like, do you believe science to be more accurate? Oh, yeah, than yeah, of law? course. Yeah. Going back to our previous banter when I was lying over there on the floor. <laughs> Like, lying down, not, like, lying. Like, oh, lying, like, yeah. not telling the truth. Laying down? I was laid out. Yeah, okay. Um, on my back. Like a turtle, stuck. <laughs> Legs flailing. Picture it. You'll like it. Um, He's wearing green. <laughs> I am. Because geniuses pick green. But you didn't pick it, did you, Fokker? <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, you know, I think Jeez. that... Uh, because of my personality type being in the C variety, look it up. Um, you know, I value logic and fact and science and numbers over emotion and whatnot. So law, in my opinion, is somebody's perspective or maybe a scientific law. So, uh, shit. Gravity. Uh, that's the only one I know. With scientific laws. <laughs> Nothing else is jumping to mind. But as a master of science, uh, I have to go with science on this one. I'm not a master of law or a law master. No. So basically what you're saying is that you're 
you have your opinion, but it's entirely biased based on the fact that you have more knowledge of science than law. I just think that law is something that's subjective that guys with wigs come up with. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so like you're saying, like, like let's in, say... in Muslim no, countries. No, no, let's just, let's just, let's keep the, let's just keep the Muslim countries out of this for a second. And just say that within science, like, you feel like science is completely unemotional and unbiased, despite the fact that they get research monies to essentially prove a particular point? That's new, though. That's new. And the origins of science, people were just out there to discover things, and they were like, oh, this is really neat, look what I found, like little kids, and then now you're getting into the pay-to-publish stuff, and you're, mm. well, Joe, um, no, lost that one, Johnson, was the... Joe Johnson? <laughs> jo- Joe, Joe John? Jo- Joe, Joe, Jimmy jo- Joe, Joe, Joe John. What's your name? Joe, Joe John, your, your name is Joe John, yeah, yeah, were you in there, Joe John, yeah, just started on fire, you know, just building, so it's like, you better not, and she's like, I'm gonna burn this mother down, you know, parts of that that were true, oh, see, I get it, uh, <laughs> yeah, Try if you're keeping the score at home. That's one uh, blunder by the tugboat. That's for what you've gotten like at least three movie references, and we're like five minutes into the thing. <laughs> if we're five minutes, I'm eight feet tall. Uh, uh, we can we can just edit it out. Don't worry. Yeah, we'll, no, we'll, we'll edit we'll this edit out, out later. Um, so basically, ch- tugboat here is going with. Uh, Science over law. Uh, I'm gonna have to agree because I know like almost nothing about law other than TV, but which seems to just whoa. Hold e- on. Evidence. No. So, law is basically taking a list of recommendations, uh, I guess, and treating it like science. So the law is the law. You can't argue it. You can't interpret it. It's the law. Oh, like you're saying, like in, say, science, it's if someone comes out with like a, a particular uh, theory or something, then some other guy comes along and goes like, no, you're completely wrong. I'm probably going to go in the opposite direction and say the exact opposite of what you said and say that that's true, and then they'll have like a nice uh, discussion through over the course of years through just papers and not directly, whereas within law, it's like... This is the. This is what we're saying is true. If you go, no, I think it's actually the opposite of that. Then they'll be like, nope, you're going to jail. Let me bring it to real life. Umpires before baseball umpires before video replay, their call was final. It's undeniable, unrefutable. I had like a third one. I was trying to do a Mike Tyson thing there. But it's I undeniable. It. It's, it's unrefutable. It's unpenetrable. I don't know. <laughs> Unquestionable. Just, said, Unquestionable. Ain't no question. Ain't, ain't no question. Next question. That one was stupid. So it was completely like based on this one person's perspective and wow. ability to, to skew, but now they got this video replay and now it's like open to... And then we usually have a little conference and then they were never going to change the call. You yeah. don't overturn a call. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, it was, that was their law on the field. Boom. Irrefutable, undeniable. The law is the law. The rules are the rules. No leeway. Black, white. No, ain't no gray. Be kind of like interesting if they did have like umpires for like everyday activities out there instead of like maybe not so much like policemen because like they're not there like all the time. But like if you could just had an umpire like follow you around for a day or something and just be so like, you collect outs and then if you get three outs you have to go home. Well, I mean, obviously they call other things other than outs. There'd be a lot of safes. Like safes and They'd probably have a labrum issue with their shoulders from making the safe side so much. And then well, you tear got, your pectoral you got strikes muscle. too, like just like your little mistakes. Like, ah! Strike one. Strike one, buddy. Strike one for the duck They don't tell you what it's for. They just lean in really super intense and say, Strike one. That's one. Keep going. I feel like that's something parents would do, or parents umpires. I got a lot of strikes growing up. Like, a lot. You get to a lot of O2 counts <laughs> when you're growing up and you are mischievous. Okay, it's three and two here. Uh, what am I going to yeah, do? 
Uh, it's a full count. Do we ground them or do si- we give them the your, free pass? Your siblings are sitting there with popcorn just being <laughs> just right. walk- I'm not going to lie. That was pretty much half of it. Yeah, uh, Lacey, what do, you, what do you think he's going to do here? Do you think he's going to push it? Yeah, definitely going to do it. He's swinging for the fences well, on this well, one. Yesterday or the last inning, he went for it. So I'm guessing he's going to be swinging away here. Yeah, well, I know like if... Uh, I mean, if the big T was pitching, but uh, <laughs> might want to change your mind yeah, on that he's, one. Uh, he's got mom to deal with here, so, <laughs> you know, this could go either way. He could get the free pass. <laughs> but, uh, no, that leads to a humorous <laughs> tale from the tugboat. <laughs> big, big T is warming up in the bullpen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, one time, I had uh, the three-wheeler, which is just a straight-up death machine. Like, Wait, it's so dangerous. We- going right into the segment of Tales from the Tugboat? Oh, I just, Tales from the Tugboat is just an ongoing, whatever uh, I feel like it. There's, uh, no, there's no theme song like Grill and Cheese. <laughs> we'll get to that later. So Naturally. Uh, so anyways, I was with uh, my cousin and uh, my other cousin, like my brother Daryl and my other brother Daryl. But they were, they were standing with the big T and I'm ripping around on the three-wheeler. Just going way faster than allowed. No helmet on. Way more dangerous than a four-wheeler. <laughs> it's, it's incredibly a motorized, dangerous. A motorized tricycle. How the is that less, ever a great idea? The less wheels, the more dangerous. That's unicycles, death traps, especially motorized. No wheels? No Surprisingly wheels. Surprisingly safe. Yeah, super safe. <laughs> uh, so I come, I come start to approach towards where they're standing. As I'm making hand motions, no one can see. (laughs) So they're coming into the Daryls and the T, and uh, T turns to them and says, Hey, watch this. Watch how I ream them out here. (laughs) Which is like the beginning of any horrible situation. Like, watch this is always just like... (laughs) Well, the worst part about it, from my perspective, I come wheeling in on the three-wheeler, big smile on my face, big T, neutral expression, the two Daryls, laughing their asses off, knowing that there's a reaming coming. And then, so I get off all happy and confident. Ha ha, I'm not in trouble. Must have been a ball. And then, oh, a ball, like a delightful time, or a ball as in our ball strike. Oh, was yeah. well done. Uh, so T-Bone oh. proceeds to basically rip me a new anus verbally, not physically. That would mm. be weird. And imprisoning. Uh, he'd get a strike for that at least. Probably a full out. Anyways, uh, yeah, I got in trouble and uh, got a serious amount of strikes on that one. Good times. <laughs> and another one where I gathered an out was it was a perfect three strike situation. Mm. So we were having a family gathering, and my one cousin, was, I guess we're calling Daryl, was there. And I was like, oh, yeah, we get to, get to come hang out my house. Yeah, all right. It was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. I think I don't forget how old we were, but we were sitting around watching The Little Mermaid on a Sunday afternoon as a family, because that's what people did in the 80s. And uh, I kept laughing at inappropriate times and making inappropriate comments. <laughs> like, to the from, point, like, the, like the dick castle that's on the front of the Little Mermaid? I don't even know what you're talking <laughs> about, but I will look that up later. Yeah, yeah there's a gigantic phallus on the, uh, classic on the Disney. cover. Classic, classic, classic Disney. Classic Disney. So I'm just ruining the experience for everyone else yeah. with my comments and rude behavior yeah. as like an eight or nine year old. Yeah. So my parents said, all right, that's it. Go in the kitchen and eat your lunch. So my cousin Daryl had to come with me, and uh, so that's strike one. You got to go in the kitchen and eat your lunch. So we're quiet. It's kind of like, you know, when you start laughing at an inappropriate time and you can't stop like giggling. Yep. And Farting then it's, in class that got and then me it's every single funnier time. Funnier and funnier. Yeah. The more you try not to yeah. laugh. And then other people just are over it completely, and they're super quiet. And but that just still, leaves you with your thoughts. Yeah. Just in the silence, you're just like going over the. I, I wasn't even thinking about it. It's just you're just trying not to laugh, and you don't even know what you're laughing about. Uh, you're just okay. out of control. So that's happening, and we had chicken noodle soup with hot dogs. And I took a wiener out of the bun, and I held it at the tip, and then shook it vertically up and down to make it wiggle like people do with pencils to make it look like they're bending, doing 
that with a hot dog. So, of course, being eight or nine years old, we crack up. Like, I, that would happen if I did that yeah. now. Yeah, especially when but, you're already, like, but who eats, cued by that dick on the oh, yeah. castle of the little mermaid. Who eats hot dogs at this age, anyways? I do. Shut up. So you're wiggling... Uh, so I'm wiggling the hot dog. We're laughing. Here. And strike two, my parents come in and say, that's it. Go to your room. So... Daryl goes back in to watch TV, and I'm in my room by myself, like you said, with my thoughts. With your thoughts in the silence. Laughing maniacally <laughs> on the other side of the wall that the TV was on. Can, can you do an impression of your maniacal uh, not an eight-year-old. I'd just be like, yeah! It sounds like a horse that got broken. <laughs> it sounds like when you let the air out of a balloon. <laughs> So anyways, some kind of laughing is going on. So in my genius, I thought it would be a great idea to open my window, which was on, we're in a bungalow, so I mean, we're looking at like an eight foot drop. Jump out the window and proceed to run around shirtless on the front lawn in full sight of the entire family looking out like the huge front window. (laughs) When did the shirt come off? Before I jumped out the window, like, I'm not gonna fit. <laughs> well, no, I oh, I was there was a lot of window. No, I was sitting on my bed and I'm like, ah, oh, this is the worst. And like, and then just shirt off, thrown at the wall, and then go and open you can't the window. Be contained. I can't, you can't conform me with you can't stop shirts me. and clothing. I get my pants on to my credit, and then why is that to your credit? And anyways. That should have been a ball right there. But, uh, so I, I was, I'm perched like a gargoyle on the window. Like, it was one of those plastic, like, it was like five or six tracks. All these windows can go every which way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like balanced on that, squatted down like a catcher, ready to jump out, poised like a cat. Yeah. And thinking like, man, it would be awesome if I just like ran out of the lawn no reason why that would be awesome. Just, that would be awesome. Again, alone with the thoughts. <laughs> well, I think it just turned up the crazy. <laughs> so, I was running, I'm, I, I don't remember, but I'm assuming just with my arms over my head, like, giggling like a schoolgirl. <laughs> waving my arms. And uh, then my dad came out the front door. And then it was more of not just frolicking around the lawn, but trying to survive <laughs> escaping the wrath I don't remember how the story ended but I'm pretty sure that I got spanked <laughs> based on previous history you're, so yeah. that would be the out I guess yeah you were kicking up dirt in his face like oh come on strike one strike two spanked <laughs> spanked <laughs> that would be interesting if that happened in ball games just grown men so you have to go and the umpire spanks you or like the wooden my mom would always have a weapon like a wooden spoon I forget, there was one occasion also where I just came in, or no, my dad just came home and I was sitting at the table and my mom had, they had talked on the phone previously and she had ratted me out for something I had done. She was like, you just wait till your father gets home. I was like, what you gonna do? Tell me no. Yeah, he just walked in the door, took his belt off without saying anything and just went at me. Like Marcus after Tobias (sighs) and Divergent. Kids can't do that anymore. Oh, no. That was like a circling you knew it was coming. Yeah. Mine was more like a full-on ambush. Like like wa- like the rock walking tall just shows up with his two-by-four and... Just starts cracking skulls. <laughs> just starts cracking skulls. In my case, it was bruising shins. <laughs> you ever get a belt across the shin? No. You want to? <laughs> no. I'll go on the record that uh, <sighs> uh, my... Uh, we didn't have, like, my parents weren't umpires for me growing up. It was more like a, like a Timbit soccer game, just letting us just <laughs> run wild and free and making up our own rules. Have fun, kids! Make up our own rules, but we're so little, we can't really do that much damage anyways. I mean, we're actually past the age where there's, like, that soft spot in your skull, so it's just like, you know. Yeah, I used to know the name of that. Like, what's, like, okay, like honestly, what's, like, a seven-year-old, like, able to do to a five-year-old? Not a whole lot. Murder. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of... Did uh, you watch the last season uh, of Walking Dead? Murder. Out of like, uh, is it like Nate? We can't say Indian burns. Native Canadians, like just 
ear, I think in that context, you can call them Indian burns, rope burns. With hands, just like, yeah. basically you take two hands, grab your wrist, and just start twisting. Like you're using a pepper shaker. Yeah, pepper mill. No, just call it a pepper mill. Okay, there we go. I got pepper mill the other day. It sounds almost pleasant. Your brother used to pepper mill used to you pe- all pepper over the place. pepper mill my arms so And especially... Oh, it's a dick move. The worst... The, the dick move part is the first time. The first time it's all like... They do it with all of them. It's like, hey, you want a wet willy? And you're like, oh, that sounds okay. Not fun. It's like, hey, you want a pepper mill? And you're like, oh... Great, that'll that sounds exciting. Uh, spice up my food or something. <laughs> spice up my life. I like windmills. Pepper mill sounds like it'll be all right. <laughs> How would that sound all right? Just a mill that shoots pepper at you? You're just covered in black pepper or white or pink? It's, that's actually what was there before the pepper spray, before they, they figured out the spray. They would just go up with this pepper mill and just kind of over your eyes. Just grind pepper into a windmill and just expect it to blow onto you. Just, it's, just, no, it's mostly just falling straight down. You're like... Is it working? And you just do it somehow into is your one working? and then blow it in the person's face. Oh, that would be terrible for both of you. Yeah. And then they just sneeze. Yeah. <laughs> or like wedgie. That's a pretty good fake sneeze. <laughs> I think I got some on my arm. I'm I'm a I'm a try to hold the sneeze in and it kind of explodes back into my brain. I am the opposite. I should really stop doing that. I yell as loud as I can when I sneeze now. There was a while where I would just say people. sneeze after I would sneeze <laughs> in case people were confused because I kind of sneeze really weird. It's like, what the hell was that? Oh, yeah, sneeze. He said it. Oh, oh he's, yeah. yeah. He labeled it verbally. So, uh, kind of uh, careening off topic again. We're going back on topic. Uh... It was all true, so I guess. We're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got umpires going around, but that's just to enforce the law. So like, I guess it, like in every society there has to be like these search, like searching for truth. Like basically, you people are just trying to figure out what's what's right, right? Like the law is like, okay, what is what is what is right, what is wrong, what is true, what are the facts here? Science is the yeah, same thing. Where is it coming from? Take, coming from, I here's. Here's the theory. We're not in grilling cheese yet, but I'm just no. going to say with my theory is for whatever reason, humans have this thing built into them that they need to know the truth. They need to know the facts. They need to know the unknowable. Just cannot stand not knowing something. And that's where it comes from. That's where all this sort of like having to have truth, having to have all this stuff is just people just hate not knowing things. There's lots of theories, but we're going to like delve into them later. We've got some theories of truth. Oh, yeah. Big theories of truth. Uh, seems like... We're going to Grecia- drop some knowledge here. The Grecians. Is it the Grecians? The Greeks. The Greeks. The Greeks. Um, or, but an artifact would be Grecian. Oh, okay. But it's the Greeks that make Grecian art. Like Grecian 5, it's from the Greeks. Because they're so hairy. Yeah, so if I was referring to a person, it would be a Greek. But if I'm re- referring to an artifact... Discovered by a Greek, it would be Grecian. Like Grecian five. Grecian five? What? Grecian five. It's like uh, it sounds just like a for, shampoo. It is. It's like just oh. for men. It's for getting rid of grays, gray hairs. So the Greeks are very hairy people. So they invented Grecian five because they're also under a lot of stress with their current situation financially. So when they're stressed, their facial hair turns gray. So they had to create Grecian five. They just comb it in, and it turns it back into a nice black, beautiful beard. Which is interesting because any time that's true. Anytime you ever see like a Greek philosopher, an ancient Greek, they're right. always white. It's like a sign well, of wisdom. Well, we're talking about hair color, right? Because the Greeks are usually a bit on the tan side. Yeah, no, I'm talking about their hair. We're talking about hair. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, let's take it away from the racist yeah. place. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen statues of marble, pure white? Yeah. Oh, maybe the Greeks it, were racist. No, everybody was racist all yeah, the time. It's true. The Dutch are pretty bad. Even when we're not racist, we're being racist for being not racist, not acknowledging race as racist. Anyways, I don't see color. Ancient Greeks, the Grecians. <laughs> um, <laughs> did you not soak up anything I Wait, said? Wait. Oh, yeah, no, but you said that the Greeks. What they make would be considered Grecian. So their philosophies would be Grecian. Wouldn't Greeks be making more Greeks? Therefore, they'd be Grecian? Whoa. 
the Grecian offspring of the Greeks? Come on, follow me on that. It's not that hard. Follow me down the rabbit hole. I'm not. I'm on the outside going, I'm not taken with that white rabbit is given. Fine. I'll climb back out. Um, coming back. It's yeah. back in it. Um, philosophy. So, like, this is, like, a bunch of Greek philosophers. There's tons of them trying to, like, search the truth. Probably Socrates, one of the first ones, real, like, big philosophy Great. guy. And, and Socrates, basically, he just asked you questions and made you question everything that you question um, so that, like, when you say something is true or fact, he goes, why? That basically happens. Like, he's probably, like, the worst friend you could possibly have. He's just this guy. He's like that, like, th like three- or four-year-old that's, like, walking around all the time, and you're, like, trying to explain something, and they're just like, why? And they just keep asking questions, and why, and why, and why, until you just, like, like implode. I was going to say so. Like, those annoying kids that will just constantly say so. Yeah, so. No, just so. No, just so. So you're like, yeah, so uh, the ancient Greek philosophers uh, had this theory about truth. So. So. So it helped them deal with their reality. So. It made their life easier. Oh. So. It helped them define their purpose. So. See, I don't see that as like a kid. I see that as a teenager. Oh. I feel like the teenager has the so. So what? Whatever. Maybe that doesn't watch. mean anything. But like the four-year-olds are like the like why? My They're like used, curious. My sister used to do that to me, and it made me want to choke her to death. So. Choke her by the neck until death. Why? Because it was annoying. How did you know you wanted to uh, choke I her? I thought you were gonna keep going with the why. <laughs> why not? I was queuing up the next one. No, no, I'm not following you down that rabbit hole. Jeez. So Jeez. he would just like say the truth. So. Narrow. So you would just, yeah, you, you would be like, uh, this is virtuous. And you, you'd be like, how do you know it's virtuous? It's like, oh, well, that's because, like, the gods determine it. It's like, how do you know the gods determine it? Well, because, and then you would just, like, mind explode, and then Socrates would get in trouble. Yeah, by the kind of greater populace. Exactly. Yeah. He, uh, at his school one day, he got sick. I don't know if it was him or Aristotle, uh, some Grecian dude. Uh, he was sick, so he just didn't come to come to school. And uh, Plato stood up, and some guy was talking at the front, giving a lesson. And Plato just stood up and said, "The greatest mind amongst us isn't even here, so what are we doing?" And just walked out. Oh yeah, beauty. That's totes myth, but because I, I don't think anyone was like, "Oh man, I gotta write this down," and then. In yeah. the future, two jerks can talk about it on a podcast. <laughs> well, I think that's the thing. It's like one of those things that becomes like more, <laughs> more myth than or more legend or whatever. Like one guy started off, he's like, "Yeah, uh, Plato just went out to go to the bathroom," and yeah. it's like, "No, man, he walked out because nah, the smart guy wasn't even here." Plato just went out to hack a dart, and then all of a sudden, uh... <laughs> I don't know, man. Plato, uh, Plato got served some of that like. Really bad tzatziki in the in the lunchroom, and he just, just, he just goes had right the runs, through, yeah. man. Just yeah, oh, I had the runs so bad. Juicy fruit, you go right through, yeah. That's not the right lyrics. First of all, juicy fruit didn't exist back in Grecian times. Oh, I'm sure they had fruits that were juicy. Grecian times. Figs. Grecian times, another theme restaurant. <laughs> um, Grecian times. But one thing that like that's the, a soap opera. <laughs> Grecian times. Um, oh man, I want to watch that. <laughs> Grecian times. Um, All togas, super dramatic things. They have like evil twin brothers waking up in the hospital. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things we have like the Greek philosophers is like observation. So it's just like the truth was largely based on what they could see. Is that what I'm like getting at? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think so. I, yeah. I don't know. To me, that is part of science yeah you're making the observations, making observations. and then for something to become a scientific law it has to be consistently observed 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 yes so like the gravity business no one's seen things just you drop an apple from a tree and flies up into the sun that baby's going down every time yeah law yeah there, science. laws happened right there so yeah, that and that would be called the correspondence theory of truth. Mm. The, the titles are written right there. So. The correspondence, like, hey, this is true, and then the other guy this goes, like, true. oh yeah, that's true. So yeah, 
They write. They just write it down, and then it's true. No, I, I think that's more constructivist. More th- get to you. the things that they say are corresponding to what happens in nature. Jeez. Look at all these C's. Um, I know they were one away from having five. Pragmatic. Can we, is there another word that means pragmatic that starts with C? Because um, we could just change Wikipedia to be that. Um, Cops. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, cacophony. Cacophony. No. Talking. Uh, castration. <laughs> <laughs> Coloring book. Corrective? No. Ooh. Conscient? No. No, that's me. Consent? No. Consistency? No. Common truth? You're just reading stuff. Call, all the collared, screen. like blue collared, is pragmatic? No, that doesn't make sense. Anyways, coherence. So that's not what our thoughts are right now. Um, coherence requires a proper fit of elements within a system. So that would be something like a mathematical <laughs> see, proof or system? See, when I first read this, the way I thought of it was basically... Whoa, whoa, whoa. who's reading anything? I thought they were just coming up with this, these well, thoughts. When, when I first... Well, I said reading this. I didn't say when, which is now. I'm just saying when I'm reading this, which is immediately, like right now. I'm sorry I phrased it so weird, like it was in the past. But it was in the past as soon as I said it. Anyways... When I'm reading this, True. <laughs> truth requires proper fit of elements within a system, and basically I just go to O.J. Simpson trial. If Come the glove on. don't Come fit... On. You ain't got shit. You ain't got shit. You must acquit. <laughs> so that's essentially what's happening with like this form of truth. Basically, if stuff doesn't fit this system, then that's a thing. But y- you were alluding to more of yeah, like, some I, sort of like... I think this kind of theory of truth is often with mathematics uh, in high school we all had to do the proofs well not all of us, I guess anyone that took the class was supposed to do the proofs, yeah. some people didn't this topic makes me so angry I almost want to not participate <laughs> geometry and discrete can go um, uh, pardon my French but uh, just stop <laughs> um, at eight look <laughs> that's, don't even I did it quite poor. I got a 53 in that geometry and discrete course because they're like, oh, here's a here's a fact or a law of math. Why don't you prove it? Like, it's been proven. It's a law. It's a fact. Yeah, that's how easy it was. You just look at some other jerk's proof and just write it out. I did not do that. I struggled. A lot of X's and Y's and Z's. Uh, We're in Canada, man. It's sad. The interesting part is that, like, when you talk about, like, this is, like, supposedly, like, logical, empirical truth, right? Like, this is just fact. This is math. This is like the, as true as you can possibly get, yet it's made up by humans, which are inherently subjective. Ooh, let's not put the horse ahead of the cart here. That's exactly where you want that's, the horse. That's <laughs> how horse and carts work. <laughs> Got this weird, like, moonwalking for, for, horse. There's that... some poor horse that, like, is pushing the cart from behind with, with its, its head. head. Sweating, yeah, just nuzzling it along. No, I'm thinking like a head down, just like struggling. I'm picturing a Clydesdale, in like a four wheeled cart. A Clydesdale. Clydesdale, the big Budweiser horses. Clydes. What are we? Or Clydes. I thought it was Clydesdale. I don't know. I don't look at the spelling of words anymore. Mm. I have the internet. Um, so yeah, this one's pretty tied. Math, logic, science. Again, I like it. Slide into the next one, which I'll let you talk about, because it's stuff I don't get. Uh, constructivist. So truth is constructed by social processes and is historically and culturally specific, often shaped by the community power struggle. So this is sort of like a rule by majority. It's like, if all of these people seem to say that it's true, then it must be true, and then you abide by such um, just common known things. I guess that's what it ties to with the historical or cultural. It's just sort of like, oh yeah, um, like... Jesus uh, had the Last Supper, and you're like, yeah, I guess he did that. And, yeah. and then that, like, kind of determines, uh, you know, that's why we should do certain things in the future. Um, Currently, I don't know. Like, it's, it's just sort of like a rule by majority. It just seems to be true. Well, as a man who didn't take traditional history class, 
and took the native studies mm -hmm. and learned about the origin stories of all the different tribes, mm -hmm. which were all basically the same and were based off events that happened, be it a comet or who knows what happened back then. Yeah. I wasn't there. But all the stories have common themes and elements that, uh, you know, so they kind of constructed their own truth about where they came from and mm. their... And for some reason, humans always have to have some higher power to answer to. So yeah. they're gods and the sun and what it all means. And so they construct these stories. And it just happened that on the far west coast of Canada, the Haida tribes, ba bam, the kid still remembers, they had their kind of version. And this happened. And this guy came yeah. from the sky and was like, oh, yes, you have to do this. And then uh, in the east, there's too many to remember, but. Like, even all the way through Quebec, which there wasn't a lot of talk of those tribes because the French had pretty much wiped them out. But, uh, yeah, where there were stuff going on, their origin stories are, like, bang on with the Western guys. Despite having no communication. Exactly. They didn't have email to be like, yeah, I think the sun is, uh, like, you know, Joe's god of power. Yeah. So let's There's worship it. Like, name it different things or whatever, but they yeah, like the, the exactly. premise. So that's something that, like, there's a psychologist, Carl Gustav Jung, he studied under Freud, and that was, like, his thing is he had a thing called, like, the collective unconscious, and this was the stuff that we just sort of inherently had uh, in our genetic makeup that just gives us certain knowledge about uh, historical things, and we all have this sort of, uh, uh, like you said, like, need to have some sort of, like, higher power. We need to know how we came to be or, like... You can go even as far as, like, I think there's been stories of, like, little kids who, like, pass out or have, like, near death or something. They'll talk about aunts and uncles that they've never met or would have no idea would even exist. Yeah, great because here's the something. movie. Hello. Yeah, exactly. So, like, there's there's that, yeah, that collective thing that everybody goes and, and has this sort of... We could drop pragmatic and put collective. Boom, five C's. You can't just fit things just because you want it to be five C's. But it's so much better. It would really fit. The five C's of truth. People would know that. It's true. C. <laughs> oh. Um, so the next one is consensus. So this yeah, seems so to be very similar to the constructivist, yeah, which is like agreed upon by a specific group. Yeah, so that's it's kind of like... Uh, you form a club or something. Yeah, or, or a religion is what I looked at. So, mm. you know, I believe that this means that. You believe the same thing. He, Roy believes it too. Oh, uh, like when you take like sort of a all in favor kind of deal? Yeah, and I don't know, and it kind of relates to the legal system a little bit. Gavel. Yeah, there's gavels. People are like, oh yeah, the, you know, you're not allowed to murder. No murdering. Boom. Uh-uh. Murdering is wrong. <laughs> so. Everybody in agreement? Yep. All opposed? Me. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, uh, it, it, it leans towards that with the fact that uh, they'll say, oh, murdering's wrong. Why is, mur why is murdering wrong? Who, where did that, why is that true? Yeah, that would be your Socrates coming in and being like, oh, why do you know that? Why is that bad? Yeah. And then Nietzsche's But like, the con the, they say it's true because everyone believes murdering's bad. No one's opposed to that. Consensus. Theory of truth. Unless you're murdering a murderer, thus stopping several other murders from occurring Next by murder. Murder. Whoa, or Hannibal. Or um, Minority Report, starring Tom Cruise. This, that ain't true. Um, he was yeah, killing it people is. too. Yeah, it is, man. Man, that ain't true. <laughs> so our last P is pragmatic, so these are things that are just like... It's the only P. It's the only P, so the last P. First and last, it still holds yeah, true. Yeah. Jeez, whoa. Why does it hold true? Whoa! Um, so this is one, like, you, you put stuff into practice. So you just, like, you go out and you do something, you see, like, cause and effect and all that kind of stuff. Although, sometimes cause and effect, whereas the third variables, if you took some master's programs, third variables, what up? Um, and I took the longest master's program, and I don't remember any third variables. You don't know about third variables? No. Master of science. Master of science. And scientific methods, so you're just kind of, like, testing things to be like, if this happens, then this should happen. If this yep. doesn't happen, then this is not true. 
or this is true when this happens, but not true when this happens. And you like test it out, and it's like, oh, that's not true. So then, you know, then you can have your false positives and your true negatives and all this kind of stuff. But we won't get into wait, that. Wait, five oh, theories of truth. I see legal system, scientific method, mathematics, whatever the first one was. Science and law, baby. Oh, observational. The, Science. The Jerry Seinfeld truth. The Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, jeez. Oh, Are people actually shaving in here? It started so good. <laughs> you ever notice how left-handed people... It's always, it's always negative with left-handed things. Coherence. Yeah. So then there's a couple of other theories that a lot of people kind of talk about. But we'll we, just kind of. But we skim. won't. We'll skim. We'll skim. Nihilist. Yeah. Nihilism. Just uh, basically nothing is true, and it's just this big, huge joke. And we spend all this time trying to prove that it's true, nothing even though like, that, that's like an unachievable goal. Because even if we were to achieve truth, how would we even know that that was achieved? So it's just like, oh, what's the point of all this stuff? So that's all nihilist. It's kind of depressing. Performative. I have no idea. You just perform truths. I don't know. I don't know. It's like that. That performance was truly magnificent. It was, he just got to the truth of that performance. Yeah, exactly. What, what are we reviewers? Redundancy. Re- I, li- I like that one. What's that like? It just keeps happening over and over again, so it's true. Okay. Yeah. Groundhog no, Day. Patterns and yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, I just tried like to you make said, it groundhog day. You throw on a, it's just the, that apple keeps falling and just happens yeah. over and yeah. over again. That one's a really cool one. I don't know what the last one is. Pluralist is it. pluralist actually is very important to talk about uh, yeah. tugboat because pluralist is basically you are incorporating several. You know all of these. You have you are well versed in all of these different theories, and you just kind of like pick and choose. Uh, which ones apply to which scenarios. So you're just like, you're not committed to one. You're just kind of like, your one is that they're all true. Whoa. All of these theories of truth are true in certain situations, and we're going to apply yeah. the one that's the best. That's like very, that's, uh, po- what was it, Pomo? postmodern? Pomo. That's a, Pomo. That's a Pomo. pretty good definition of it. If I was making up my own definition of it, it would be like, a lot of people believe it. So it's plural. I got like keep going. I lost it. No, no, it's just like no, no, no. You're, you're, you're. That's consensus. You're, you're conversation. <laughs> just say that whenever you want to stop a topic. So uh, conversations. So uh, butt plugs or dildos. Conversation. Whoa. I don't think we'll ever know the truth of that. Um, which theory is best? Um, which one's most relevant today? Well, we're kind of going into this pluralistic post modern society where we can't even make up our minds so we're just like yeah no it's all true we can't because if we stand on a particular position it's going to be met with a lot of like upheaval and and revolution and stuff and hey, people, be, people don't want that you gotta be flexible you gotta be open minded yeah yeah or else people will be like oh no you can't you'd be like malleable oh, exactly oh nice word but sometimes we're like so but I think that's what's getting us into trouble sometimes with our society yes. is that we're so malleable that we just we can't yeah I think but I think at the other extreme, you're having these fundamentalist religious folks that are into the uh, whatever one of the yeah, other. Yeah, they're just resisting were. the pluralistic because we're like being all plural. Every time there's something that exists, someone's going to be like, "Nope, I think the opposite is true," and they're going to fight the majority to the death. Is, to the death, most of the time. Yeah, rockets and gunships. Yeah, giraffes. Um, so which which one? which one of the so pluralist? No, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Let's really break up the uh, tit for tat on that, but of the five C's or four C one P combination, which one do you dig the most? Do I dig the most? Yeah. Well, to be slightly digging it with G's. I some kind of seventies. I'm definitely. I'm definitely with the pluralist, but I think the nihilist is actually kind of interesting. That's not one of the. That's not one of the five C's or P's. I'm going off the board. Answer the question. I've gone off the board before. I'll do it again. Where is she? <laughs> I'm not wearing hockey pads. Um, is the fact that all of it is like our our whole purpose in life is to find these answers, to find these truths, to find meaning in our lives. I'm doing the George doing Bush, like, the presidential you're doing a lot of hand, hand that like the wheel is in motion. Yeah. I'm saying, and 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 that 
everyone tries to search this and that's the thing but we'll never know if it's like purposeful or whatever so it's all kind of a big joke and you just kind of go like I know this is ridiculous but I'm going to do it anyways because I think it's enjoyable and it gives me somewhat of a purpose in life um, which I think is like kind of entertaining me at this point just because I'm going through this weird quarter life crisis that's all like you know dude you're I don't want to reveal your age but I'm pretty sure you're older than 25 uh it's a quarter life crisis how do you know how old I'm gonna I don't know my death anniversary I'm just assuming that I'm gonna live to what's four times 27 Jesus Christ <laughs> Christ on the cross <laughs> You want to figure it out with your mental math? Yeah, I'm doing the mental math. I'm going to count that. So it ends in an eight. That's what we always start with. It ends in an eight. And then... No, break it down. Break it down. It's more fun to say... No. Okay. Four times... Four times 25 is 100. So that's on. And the other ones are twos. 27, I'm timesing it by four. Four times seven is 28. Want to get there faster? It ends in eight. And then two... We're carrying the two over the head. And then the one... The No, the... What is it? The seven times two, seven? No, twenty times four. four. Two times four. It's eight with the two, so it's a hundred and eight. I'll be a hundred and eight. You know, a way faster way to do that yeah. is you take the twenty-five times that by four. That's a hundred. Yeah. And then you have two extra times that by four. That's eight. One oh eight. See how much faster I didn't have to put my hands over my head to carry the two. Yeah, but it's a little redundant because we got to the same answer just in a different way. Mine was super See, fast. See, which one is more true? Neither of them, they get there, but one is more efficient, I guess. Yes, very right. much so. Okay, there, Corporate that's the truth. America. That's the truth. Coming at you, America? straight with the Did truth. Did you just say America? I don't Nothing know. Nothing to do with truth. Do they need to be considered in concert, or can they be considered separately? We went over, like, pluralism yeah, is... Like a gajillion times. Yeah, if I would have yeah. known what pluralist was, I never would have wouldn't even that have question. that question. What do you mean? This is totally off the top of our heads, tugboat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, the catcher of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like, like, the worst catchphrase on a sitcom ever. <laughs> I would listen to that. <laughs> oh, I guess the catcher out of the bag. Oh, he said it. That would be, all, that would be all the comic relief for <laughs> Grecian times. There'd be one guy, probably a dopey no. fat guy in a tow truck. Pretty sure it would say, no. Looks like the cats are the back. Pretty sure that would be the catchphrase in Egyptian times. With the, too pharaohs, many times. the pharaohs with their cats. Oh, well, guess you let oh. the cat out of the and bag, then, pharaoh. And then, and then the other rich guys start celebrating their birthdays, and then the pharaoh's like, Oh no, the cats are in the bag. <laughs> He said it. He said it. Oh, look at that callback. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, that's it's right. It's all about the callbacks, baby. But we're aware of the other things we said. Um, so, I guess it's getting into the uh, our final our final segment. Yeah, bit. well, before we do that, since we had such a terrible opening, we should probably just say what the topic was of this podcast. Oh, it's about truth, everybody. It, we were giving a background on truth, because now we're going to get weird with it. Whoa, getting real into the truth. So, this segment of Grill and Cheese is going to be about perspective. And it's a lot of Socratic commentary, but... So, the other day, a little tale for the tugboat for you. Driving to work, I happened to notice that it was a beautiful sunrise. I don't want to be weird about it, but I pulled over and just kind of took it in. I thought it was majestic. Yeah. You know, sun coming through the clouds. You can see the beams of light. I'm like, wow, that must be what God looks like. And then I kind of looked around, and everyone else is just, just going by me. No one else is stopping. <laughs> no one else is appreciating this. So I thought to myself, does this look different to me? Am I seeing this different? Is it? Does it look like this to everyone else? It's a thing I don't even. Well, I could dive into that, but I think uh, first of all, you had to actually like stop and, and be conscious of it. I think a lot of these people probably didn't even. It's not to say they wouldn't think it was beautiful if they actually stopped to look at it, but people's perspectives didn't exist because they were just like. Phew! 
your... But, I mean, how do you not see the sky or the sun when you go outside? Maybe that's a problem with our world today. Um, a little bit. That's that's like a little thing they call autopilot, even though like people don't fly when they're walking. It's like auto walking or something like that. And they just like auto erotic asphyxiation. Basically, you go through your routines through an everyday thing, and you don't stop to smell the roses, to watch the sunsets, to sunrises, and all that. Kind I watch of stuff. sunsets too. Let's not. Uh, let me break it down. Let me make it real for you. Yeah. It's coming here tonight, here being wherever we are. Yeah. And I'm driving west. Don't make assumptions. And it's raining. The sky was gray. And then I crested a hill. And it was just this beautiful orange color. It's the beautiful sunset seeming to center right over the location where we are. And I'm like, whoa! And I'm listening to this guy talking on the radio, and I'm like, that's like the light. What a what a metaphor. I'm going towards like the light, like the illumination, the knowledge, where we're gonna talk about truth and we're gonna spread this. And that's like the little oasis that I'm driving to. Oh, blew my mind. So I crashed. No, I'm kidding. I didn't crash. I did change lanes by accident. <laughs> and then I just turned my blinker on like halfway through to be like, ah, I meant to do that. It's cool. You ever do that? No. Grill and cheese? No. No, no. Although I do get like extremely peeved when people switch lanes without signaling, even though when it's, it's like clearly their intention and there's like tons yeah. of space, every time someone doesn't do it, my like instinct is just my signal. Your hands Dink. are on the steering wheel. The indicator is that's what I call it now. What's worse? <sighs> Someone who switches lanes without signaling or someone who continually signals without switching lanes? Like the old man that leaves his thing on and then you come up behind him then you turn yours on hoping he'll look back and notice and then turn his off. And then, and then you, start you, start flashing, you start flashing your headlights to get his attention so he'll look at your blinker. Yeah. And then he like looks and he's like, oh, I guess this guy wants to pass and he's willing to go into the median to do it. And then he moves over out of your way and you're like, fudge. So you just go in behind him and he's like oh my god this guy's gonna murder me because that's you know that's where we go as a society instantly from what is he doing oh my god he's gonna kill me <laughs> like infinitely trustful as a youngster to like distrustful of everyone as an elderly person or middle-aged am i middle-aged no pretty... depending on how you live if you knew your death anniversary i would say i'm middle-aged then <laughs> death anniversary. No, you're like on borrowed time, aren't you? Didn't you say you No, 42. Like, we said 42. Oh, 42, okay. Just like my old man. You're older than middle-aged, man. Do the math. Jeez. Let's do the math. <laughs> Let's not do that. I don't think we have time for that. Um, so back to perspective <laughs> is that, yes, actually every single person will interpret that sunset differently, whether it's very a small amount or a very large amount. So you take a person who is blind for one, is going to have a different perspective. It's all you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You can't hear the sunset. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they can. That's something you don't know, because with exaggerated okay, I, senses, it's like, oh yeah, sun's going down. For two days, I will blindfold myself. <laughs> yeah. And I will set an alarm on yeah. my Timex Indigo watch. Indiglo, sorry. You won't be able to tell, because I'll know when sunset blind. is, and it'll be, pop, 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 pop. And I will go outside and look to the west. And if I can hear that sunset, I will send you a fax of what I heard. I'll first purchase a fax machine, and then I will get a phone line. Oh, the fax. Fax? 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 That's what I thought the fax was the closest to the truth. Isn't that what we were talking about? That's what we are talking about. The fax? I'm just sending you the fax. We're going to get the fax, and then I'll send you the fax of what it, what it sounded like. How's that? How's that grab you? That's fine. So going back to your comment. You know what the facts sound like? Beagong, beagong, That's more like a modem, like a dial up modem. Your neighbors are going to murder us. Um, 
We just had new ones move in. <laughs> this is Beautiful. their first experience of our Good. Maybe being they'll here. become long time listeners, first time callers. Yeah. So like so given No, I wanted to hold on. No, I wanted to say so we all have this varying level of perception. That's what I was gonna say. But and then I was gonna say whose is right? Whose is true? Uh Bum, as a bum, true bum, grill and cheese. As a true politician, which I am not, <laughs> I will go off the record. Off the record, everyone will edit this out. You're gonna cop out. Um, like the unsuccessful Tracy Morgan, Kevin Smith picture. They're all true. No. Nope. Yet none of them are true. Ugh. I've been watching House of Cards, and your answer makes me sick. Because, from your perspective, it will be true to you. Because that's how you experience the situation. That's a reality. Exactly. It's but real. for me, who has a different one, will have his own truth. And it will most likely be different from your truth. Now, the interesting part is where it becomes... Oops. Yeah. It's uh, getting even more real. Spilled. I lost my train of thought. I know. I spilled. You spilled the beer. Now I lost my train of thought. The interesting but, no, part. The interesting part is that even your own truth can get skewed within yourself. Ugh. So even with time, how you remember an event will be skewed. And it'll be skewed to fit in with how you view the world and how you view all this kind of stuff. So there really isn't much truth like within the world. Now, you'll go, oh, Kevin, but what about objective truth or objective no. reality? I was going to say, how do you relate that back to those five or nine theories of truth we just discussed? Again, they're all <laughs> somewhat true in their own ways, but inherently they can never be truly factual because we will never understand an objective reality because there is no way anyone can have an objective perspective. None. Even, like, would, even, would... even God... Okay, this is gonna like probably piss off a bunch of people. Let's not make it a god cast. <laughs> <laughs> See what he did there? I've been sitting on that for like <laughs> eight episodes. I bet you God does have a podcast. God cast? That's the Bible essentially, right? But like written down, like yeah, they didn't have the internet back then. Yeah, so. exactly. So even he would have a knowledge of all history, right? Sure. So even his perspective would be subjective. But wait, but wait, what if I don't believe in God? What if my perspective is that there is no God? That's true for me. You said it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah. totally true for you. But is that true on the whole, like but ultimate truth? So couldn't my perspective be my objective truth? No. But it's... It's inherently subjective. But that's all I believe. So for me personally, that's it. That's my truth. <laughs> I, was pretty, I just got grilled. <laughs> <a> great place. <laughs> we can edit this part out. We can edit no, no, this no. Cut it. Cut and, cut. Cut and paste? Cut. Can I just paste like some victory music at the end? That's your victory music? That's just what's going on in my head like 80% of the day. The can cam? That's embarrassing for you. Yeah, I guess. Unless you're just looking at naked ladies doing the can can, which is. No, it's mostly bears driving tricycles. No, with, that's with that's. Do, 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 no, do, 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 I shook it up. Do, 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 that's my truth. <laughs> oh my goodness! I like, just, this actually happens in the real world where people do go. This is truth, and like, nope, nope, no, nope. You're uh -huh. wrong. You're wrong. Yep. Shut up. You're wrong. I'm not stupid enough to believe that my sunrise is the only true sunrise, because everyone will have a true sunrise, mm -hmm. just like true love. Interesting part is that the sun actually doesn't even move. It doesn't even rise. It kind of revolve around yeah. it. So it's kind of like well, a poor... the expression comes from probably pre-Grecian times where they said that the sun revolved around the earth and the earth was the center of the universe. It's not. <laughs> Science. <laughs> but is that true? 
why do we keep why do we keep that phrase then uh, it's an idiom <laughs> it's a dogma no, no it isn't <laughs> um oh sure and it, and I have kinda, a good one there for you keep going keep talking um it'll come back so like the sun and it kind of goes <clears throat> up but on an angle like an acorn stair lift just stepwise just one yeah no it's not a it's not a roller coaster <laughs> the, the old ones used to just do one little like like a little three inch jump and just go that was the noise it made probably yeah just like a ton of minor whiplashes before <laughs> yeah that's how they loosen you up that's how old people stretch no you're going sideways so it's like you're doing like a little Will Smith oh. dance flicking your head almost like a Hathaway what is love I'm thinking more like a Michael Jackson's thriller twitch when he's like the zombie and he's like uh, I feel like that's too much it's my perspective it's my truth that's where I'm coming from yeah so there's no I don't think there's gonna be any winner of this one because we could just Socrates ourselves to death Socrates it's a verb now <laughs> that's like a is that what they used to call them for like wet t-shirt Socrates <laughs> Welcome to the stage, <laughs> Socrates. Gross. Yeah, that would be a stripper in Grecian times. Yeah, comes out really to trying to make that Grecian times work, eh? It's gonna be more of a like strip club theme <laughs> than anything. Ooh, so everyone wears a toga. Yeah. Not the customers; they get to wear their like dungarees and <laughs> sweaters. Dungarees. Nautical. You know, like a longshoreman would wear, like those gray sweaters. They're like kind of ribbed for her pleasure. And they have buttons like coming out of the neck but going towards the shoulder. I'm just not acknowledging you with the response so you can go more in depth <laughs> describing the sweater. It's nautical. It's nautical. The intricate weaving of the wool. Like a, like a merino wool. Merino wool, that's a thing. Marine? Don't look at me like that. It's nautical, it's M marine. M no, this is M-E-R-I-N-O. Oh. It's a sheep from Australia, New Zealand. No big deal. Lanolin? Lanolin, I just think linoleum every time. And then I think about floors. I think of titanium. When you hear linoleum? Yeah. I think of floors. Mm -hmm. Like that black and white square pattern that used to be in Phil's basement. You ever sleep on that floor? I have. No. No sleeping bag. Just sometimes you get too hot. You just gotta press your torso against a cold, hard floor. I don't mean to be rude, but That's... you are essentially a gigantic pillow. <laughs> yeah, now. Before I was just like a lumpy bar of soap. <laughs> Bars of soap don't get lumpy. What are you talking about? You're not using them right. That's the truth. I use a liquid soap. Like a body wash? Yeah. What's, what kind of soap are you using now? Uh, it's Dove Men Care. Uh, yeah, a lot of guys are going to that Dove now. I like it. I'm Old Spice still. I'm Old Spice across the board now, except head and shoulders. You gotta have it's, the head and shoulders. It's like the old slogan that they used to have for women, where it was just like, strong enough for a man, but made for you. So it's kind of like the op opposite. It's kind of like... It's strong enough for a man, made for a woman. Yeah. That's, Secret. Yeah. Yeah. Conversation. So like Dove is like the opposite. It's like... Yeah. Like gentle like a woman, but made for you. Oh, I would have said... Made for men. I would have said made for men, because there's no way this would work for a woman. <laughs> that's why I'm not marketing, I guess. <laughs> I guess that is exactly what it is. Although, there is a, a pretty interesting Dove commercial on, because uh, like, I watch golf all the time, and it's got a golfer, Canadian, uh, Graham Dillette. Woo! And he's, like, trying to sell this Dove product, and he's like, I've had to make some pretty difficult decisions in my life or whatever. Like, when I'm coming down the stretch, you know, I can either go for a par 5 and 2 over some water, maybe uh, get in a birdie and win it, or you lay up and then try and knock it close and get yourself a par. 
that's why I choose Doug. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, just, there's, like, there's no tie. There's no logic. It's just like, okay, we're going to get a Canadian celebrity, yeah. Yeah. and this then is, he's just going to like has no tell some story. no relevance outside of someone watching no, golf. No, no, no. And I wish more commercials were like that. That's why I choose Doug. <laughs> choose Doug for men, because sometimes you don't know whether to go for it or to lay up. You sound like Dr. <laughs> Steve Brule. <laughs> I was not even on purpose. Oh man! Um, but that's yeah, my commercial that's, voice. That's that's a uh, Dove has some pretty good good commercials. Like they do really, really, really well for like the women's commercials. They're yeah. like like no, the more recent even. one they have is like the the uh, like it's like little girls. They interview them, and then they interview grown women after. So they're just like the most recent one was age. So they're like showing all these little kids, Eight. and they're like four, and they're like five, and like. Four and a half and like stuff like this, and then they go to the older the older women like middle aged and they're like, "How old are you?" And they're like, "I get that camera off me." Conversation. <laughs> they just get up and leave the room, or they like hide their faces or something like that, and it's just like basically Dove's just like, "What the fuck? What happened? Yeah. What the why? hell happened? Why? What happened between this and this?" And and then the That's other one. Grocery they got for their twenty first birthday. Yeah, that's what happened. That's what happened. Thanks, thanks a lot. Great gift. Great gift. Real, Real thoughtful. thoughtful. <laughs> yes. Um, and then Podcast the, high five. The other one that they have is just like they show like video cameras or like pictures being taken, and kids are like all up in the grill of the camera, and, like smiling, Ugh. and they're like laughing around, being all Ugh, goofy. Kids. And Ugh. then they like go to wi- like middle aged women, and they're just like slam the camera at it. It just like it's goes just all the blurry. Face that I make eighty percent of the day right here. Yeah. Or like they just have one, just like edit this out, edit, edit it out. Don't Photoshop this. Photoshop this, don't. So, so and then she's like, "What happened from here to here?" By Dove. <laughs> like, By Dove. Maybe it'll get better. We don't. I know. don't know. Maybe you'll make your kids use Dove. <laughs> Maybe you won't be so ugly when you get older. I think uh, a no. Dove a Dove commercial for kids would just be like some guy like making the like hand gesture for a Dove, and then kids would be like, "Yeah, I want that." Yay! No, for me. uh... Old Spice started using it in high school before the commercials got, before it became cool. Was it cool? I don't know. The commercials were certainly entertaining. But, uh, yeah, I use it. I like it. They have a line of deodorant that really speaks to me, the animal stuff. The, uh, I'm wearing, I've got Lion Pride in my bag, and I'm wearing Fox Crest right now. I have Hawk Ridge, Wolf Thorn, whatever the bear one's called. Sounds like a lot like, uh, like Game of Thrones. Yeah. Makes me feel powerful when I put it on. Fox like Game Spirit. of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Deodorant. By Old Spice. <laughs> Wolf. Wolf Thorn. Yeah, I've got... i basically got the entire Dove product line. Ugh. See, I'm the, I've am the. I have the body wash. You have shampoo, too? Yeah. Ugh. The, the best part about the shampoo Ugh. part is that it's like this fresh awake kind of shampoo, and it's got caffeine in it. What? Yeah. I, no, that yeah. can't. Yeah, my shampoo has caffeine to wake up my dead hairs. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Isn't that ridiculous? Yeah, that's... Today I saw a, uh, a tweet on the Twitters. <laughs> Your hair is looking... It's looking pretty... Uh, pretty asleep, pretty tired. <laughs> yeah, it looks, like, looks like your hair just went through a huge caffeine withdrawal. Yeah. Shaking and stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, I saw a tweet... And it had some peppers just in a bag, and on the bag it said no GMOs. There's never been a GMO pepper in the history of the planet. Mm. It's like me taking, uh, no, that's a stupid example. I got nothing. I think we're done here. You got anything else? I'm just looking at the time. 68 minutes. Yalmer, Jagger, minutes. We gotta do more. Oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah, I like that idea. Like, right on. What? Perfect pump. Perfect pump. It's honestly, I wasn't even doing anything. You just completely came up with that on your no, own. No, I didn't. No? No, I didn't. Don't be a pervert, man. <laughs> what? 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 Pervert? Pervert? Pervert!